So I was out gathering scrap metal on my birthday. You know, just like a way to make a few extra bucks and get the truck out and, you know, just do something. And I started thinking about that old phrase, which is, I don't even know if I got this right, but I think the phrase is that the cobbler's children wear no shoes, something like that. You know, like the dude who makes shoes doesn't really make them for his own kids. And I was thinking about that phrase and I was thinking about how when I'm out in handyman land doing jobs, there's a lot of the jobs that I do out there that I could actually be doing around our place. So I went back and immediately got to work on the chicken coop. Uh, the chicken coop is fine for the chickens. Like they seem pretty satisfied with it. It's really hard to, uh, to frustrate a chicken, but uh, it's just not working perfectly for us now that our chickens are laying. You can see their nesting boxes are just so kind of uh, hillbilly style, just like real low tech. So originally when I built this coop, I put that little door on the side and that's because I knew I needed to, in the future, build out some proper nesting boxes. If you've had chickens before, uh, you, you may have had the same experience that I have, which is that your chickens will lay eggs like all over the place unless they've got really nice nesting boxes that are kind of secluded and private. So I got after that job, um, just kind of like a low tech job at home. And you might notice that there's a new tool out there. Melissa got me this awesome skill saw for my birthday. It's a, uh, a tool I've been coveting for a long time. You know, I've got other circular saws, but this is one of those worm drive saws with a ton of power and it's a beast. It was really fun to work with and I'm hoping to just get a million more miles out of it. She also hooked me up with this cabled hat, this new knitted hat, which is really nice. And it was a good birthday. You know, a little bit of home homework or jobs on the home front so that at least this cobbler's chickens are wearing shoes. But then the next day it was time to get back out there and update a back door lock with one of those newfangled push button battery operated deadbolts. Now the thing is, is that there are a couple ways of interpreting that old adage about the cobbler. One is that the cobbler is someone who's kind of like a slacker at home or maybe like too much of a workaholic and always making shoes for everyone else and not attending to the people close to him or her. So, you know, that's one way of seeing it. But then there's another way to see the adage, and there's probably a bunch of ways, but, but another way to see the adage about the cobbler is that he or she is kind of like, like good, you know, like a decent person, someone who's out helping the community, you know, making something for other people that they can't make for themselves. And that's why I like the cobbler version of the saying. And there are so many other versions of the saying, like there's a version about the plumber, you know, the plumber's house is always dripping in the faucets and there's a bunch of versions, but, but the cobbler version of the saying is really good because who can make shoes from scratch? I mean, that is hardcore making a set of shoes and it's actually kind of impressive that the cobbler's out there making shoes for other people. And if the cobbler's kids don't have shoes, I don't know, like, in one way of seeing the adage, it's almost worth it. You know, it's almost worth it that the cobbler, like this person with these badass skills, is out there doing it for other people. Now, my deal, as you know, is that I'm not really a specialist. Like, I'm no cobbler. Instead, man, for me, no two days are alike. You know, this day I was building this uh, shelf for these people up in their attic. They had this crazy new air system, this big old octopus of an air system, and it was just kind of killing their space up there, so they wanted a shelf. And, you know, later that day, I was doing something completely different. But I do need to mention what happened next, because it was really totally messed up, and I guess pretty dangerous. So I was cutting out some trim uh, downstairs in that same house, and I cut into an electrical line. I was using that oscillating tool you see right there. And fortunately that tool is not grounded. You know, it's like a nice plastic tool, man. I hit that power line. Sparks were flying a little fire started up. It got really crazy. I shut off the power, cut out the other piece of trim. And you can see that that 110 line, that piece of Romex is just hidden underneath the trim all the way around the room. It's a good way to hide a power line if you need to, but you know, super dangerous if you're cutting into it. 
Anyway, I uh, killed the power, spliced that nick in the line, put it in a junction box, and then built out the thing I was working on, built out this kind of surround around another one of those ventilation pipes, drywalled it up, and was back in business. So like I was saying, at one point in the day, I might be changing out a doorknob and later on building some shelves and then doing a plumbing repair or wiring job or whatever. I'm definitely not a cobbler like a specialist, but for me, that is totally the best thing about being a handyman. I mean, that is what I love about it. It might have some long days that end in the dark and wipe me out, but it's just really cool to be challenged and always learning new things and just doing different things for different people every day of the week. All right, next morning I had a stray dog to return. Uh, there's a long story there, but it's a neighbor's dog. Uh, we ended up with the dog back at our place. I had to take it back to their house. After that, it was over to this big job I've been working on, relighting this kitchen. Totally blowing out the existing lights, fishing new wires, and putting new lights in the kitchen. I'm gonna make a dedicated video about that one, so I'm not gonna say too much about it here, but it's been a fun job, interesting, and really satisfying in the end. So I gotta ask you, how do you feel about repetition? You know, like doing the same thing over and over again, going back and forth across the driveway. Left side, right side, left side, right side, back and forth across really familiar ground. Now, this handyman gig involves almost none of that kind of repetition because like I was saying, every day is different and every job is different, and everyone you work with is different, and every house is different, and all that. But then, on the other hand, it's like always the same. You know, you get up in the morning, you pile in the truck. These days, I gotta carry all my batteries and paint with me so they don't freeze overnight. You get in the truck, and it's one job after the next. You hit the hardware stores for supplies, take a lunch break, maybe take a few phone calls, send out a few invoices. But basically, you're doing it over and over again. You might not be in the same crawl space every day, but dang if you don't end up in another crawl space. In this one, I'm actually setting up a couple of gas fireplaces for these people, and it's gonna be a sweet setup. Maybe I'll make another dedicated video about that one, you know, taking an old fireplace and transforming it into a new, clean gas burning system. Now, Melissa would concur that this handyman's house has a couple of fireplaces that could use a conversion just like the one I'm doing out there, but I haven't exactly gotten around to doing them. But this plumber's house does not have a dripping tap. That's at least a good thing. All right, thanks for checking out the video. Like I said before, it's not exactly a story of how to do it. Instead, it's just an account of how I did it. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you in the next video.